All right, welcome to English Language Arts. Here is our objective for English Language Arts today. I will be able to connect punctuation to reading with dramatic expression. Now, the very first thing that we need to go over is what is punctuation? We've talked about it before in the past, but I'm not sure if you remember exactly what it is. Punctuation is how you end a sentence. So we have a period ending this sentence. Sometimes you have a question mark. Sometimes you have an exclamation point. Um, commas also count as punctuation marks, okay? Community is then a now workbook. Um, turn to page 12. That is your um, all kinds of communities. What were some of the key details that you had found yesterday? If you did not read all kinds of communities yesterday, you need to pause this video and go back to yesterday's assignment, um, Monday's assignments, um, or else you won't understand what we're going to be talking about today. So it is important that you read paragraphs 1 through 10 and annotate key details before you move on to um, this lesson. Okay, so I'll give you five seconds to do that. Five, four, three, two, one. So those of you that are still watching are those that read the correct assignment and are, mo and are continuing on. Okay. So here, um, one student had really good key details and main ideas. Um, so these are some key details that you could have found in paragraphs one through six. People across the world live in different communities. Some communities are cold most of the year. Sometimes it's the jobs that makes the community different. In some towns, many residents were born and raised in the area. However, all communities have one thing in common. Let them tell you why their hometowns are special. Um, so possible main idea put into their own words was communities are different, which is one main idea. And then another main idea could be people have communities where they live. Um, so those are great, um, great key details, great possible main idea. Um, paragraphs 7 through 10, we talk about Farmersville specifically. And so these are some of the key details that were found there. My town, Farmersville, is in a rural area in northern Texas. Farmers have called this place home since 1849. Onions became so big that the community started an onion festival in 1935. The first Saturday of each month, farmers from the area sell their goods at the local market called the Onion Shed. So, and some possible main ideas is that somewhere in the 1800s, Farmersville started an onion festival. So, um... That is accurate and true, and that is a possible main idea, um, what the author wanted us to learn in that, um, in that section of text. So what you guys are going to be doing now is now you will be reading uh, paragraphs 11 through 21 to learn about communities in St. Louis and Los Angeles. Annotate by underlining key details about the communities discussed. Please remember to pay attention to the maps the captions are what's written in blue underneath the pictures and the pictures. <laughs> All of those things are important. Um, so at this time, and what you're going to do is you're going to be doing this slide. Same thing. Give me the key details that happened at that part. What's the possible main idea? What did the author want you to learn from this, from all of these details? Um, same thing for 17 through 21. And at this time, if... Well, I want you to pause the video now and go ahead and do this assignment, okay? So that way, um, when you guys get back, we can move forward about a dramatic um, expression, okay? So go ahead and read that, and I will come back in five, four, three, two, one, okay? So I'm going to read this. Um, and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. My town, Farmersville, is in rural area of northern Texas. Rural means it is in the country, but that doesn't mean we are hicks. Dallas is only 35 miles away. We can drive there in half an hour. How did you feel about the way that I just read that paragraph? Did you feel like I was excited, that I was bored, what... What are some of the things that you might might have thought? 
what clues in the text tell you that I should have read it differently? I'm going to tell you what clues in the text tell you what I, what it should have been different is especially this exclamation park, part, bleh, exclamation point, exclamation point. This tells you that I should have been more enthusiastic when I said that, okay? Which means more uh, punctual, more um, expressive, uh, something like that. Also, these commas. Commas mean to pause. It's a, it's a soft pause, not a hard stop like periods. Um, it's a soft pause, meaning to slow down. And I didn't do that either. I just read straight through. I didn't stop at the periods either. I just continued to say the the entire thing rather um, without expression. Okay. Let me read it for you again with expression. With expression. My town, Farmersville, is in rural area of northern Texas. Rural means it is in the country. But that doesn't mean that we're hicks. Dallas is only 35 miles away. We could drive there in half an hour. So rural means it is in the country. I noticed that this sentence ends with a period. This means that the author is making a statement of fact. So while I should still read it as though I'm interested in what I'm saying, I don't have to read it with a lot of emotion. The sentence that follows it, however, ends with an exclamation point, which can be used to express a lot of different emotions, such as, anger, fear, excitement, or surprise. That means that when I read this sentence out loud, I should vary the tone and volume of my voice to reflect these emotions. Okay? Rural means it is in the country. But that doesn't mean that we're hicks. So you see the difference as you read out loud those sentences. Notice the difference. The exclamation point tells me I should read this sentence with more emotion and expression than the sentence that end with a period. I was also able to use the context clue, but to help guide my reading. It shows that Mason is contradicting an idea about Texans. So that tells me my tone should reflect his strong disagreement with this idea. Because Hicks is not a polite thing to say when somebody says that they're in the South, okay? So um, it's like people saying that those that are in California are surfing all the time. I don't know about you guys, but I've never been surfing. So <laughs> that's not accurate. So that that's just what he's saying. That doesn't mean that we're hicks, you know, um, is saying that that doesn't mean, you know, that we are in Texas. That doesn't mean that we're a certain type of Texas person. I hope that makes sense to you. So, as I read these sentences, I think of the commas as being like yellow light on a traffic light. They tell me I should slow down. Periods are right, like red lights. They tell me I should come to a full stop, and sometimes I like to take a quick little breath. It's important for me to insert these pauses as I read aloud because it helps vary my reading to make it more interesting for the listener and gives him or her a chance to understand and reflect on what I'm saying. So here's the sentences. As the name of my town says, we have a lot of farmers here. Farmers have called this place home since 1849. So you see how there's more intention as I am reading those sentences because I'm putting in those pauses and those stops. So here is your practice. You're going to read paragraphs 18 through 21 out loud. When there is a period, stop and breathe. Okay. When there are commas, slow down. When there are exclamation points or question marks, go for it, which means you don't want to say a question. Let me think of a question. That would work. Um, have you ever heard of St. Augustine? See how I, the way that I say it lets you know that it's a question rather than have you ever heard of St. Augustine? Even the way that I said St. Augustine, you could kind of hear a little question at the end. You got, you have to add in those different tones so that way it makes it, one, it also makes it really more fun to read. 
Um, but you also understand a little bit more about what the author wants you to think of these things and places as you read out loud, okay? So do this, and then after you're done with this, you have a couple of reflection questions. How did reading Mason and Gabrielle's ideas aloud help you to better understand their point of view regarding their communities? That's the first question, and I want your response right here. Second question is, how did the experience of reading the text aloud affect the way the text sounds in your mind as you read it silently to yourself? So after you've read out loud, I want you to compare. What is what was it like reading it first quietly just in your mind versus now you're reading aloud and putting in those pauses, stops, and exclamations? Um, what What's the difference? How is it the same? How is it different? And that's what you're going to put in this box. So today is Tuesday, so I want you to go ahead and check Miss Eigel's Google Classroom for directions for STEAM. And remember, I think she said that she only posts once at the beginning of the week. So there might be more than one assignment in there, but you're going to do the same thing for both Tuesday and Thursday. So um, make sure you're paying attention to that. Silent reading. Uh, Freckle, I saw, I forget, I know Anaya was on Freckle yesterday, and I think Cruz, very good job. Um, I'm glad that you guys are practicing your English language arts on Freckle as well. Um, don't forget about Get Epic. Here's our class code as well. Um, and don't forget about Sora. Um, Tuesdays usually would have been our library day, so I'd love to challenge you to go find something that you've never read before and go ahead and read it and enjoy it. And I hope you guys have a very happy Tuesday. Please do not forget to check in with me at least once today. Okay? All right. I'll talk to you guys later.